This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Hello and welcome to SL Chennai Speaks Out. Ajmal Kasab, the lone captured terrorist of 2611, is getting a fair trial by the Indian state, despite his many dramatic retractions, despite certain reports that in fact it cost the government more than 30 crore rupees for this fair trial. Now contrast this with Indian prisoners in over 1,500 jails across the country. Two and a half lakh prisoners, in fact, are not convicted as yet, they are languishing in prison because they are still under trial. And a lakh and 70,000 for petty offenses. But the state has also shown clemency. Take the case of Nalani Sriharan, accused, in fact, and convicted in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case, whose death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment, and now she's even fighting a battle for premature release. Take the case of Govind Sami, a convict, murder convict, in the Coimbatore prison, who murdered five of his relatives, and who recently, after three attempts, has managed to get his death sentence commuted to life imprisonment. We cannot sweep under the carpet cases of encounter killings by the police. Many believe that some of them are completely stage managed. We cannot sweep under the carpet cases of custodial torture, custodial deaths, and primitive methods of interrogation. Now, to join the dots we have in our studio, two very senior IPS officers, Mr. Rajesh Das, Inspector General of Police, Coastal Security Group, Mr. Pradeep Philip, also another senior Inspector General of Police, Tamil Nadu Police, I've got Mr. R.K. Radhakrishnan, Deputy Editor of The Hindu, and Ozzy Fernandez, Director of Human Rights Foundation. And we'll also be joined by Dr. R.K. Raghavan, former Director, CBI, and Henry Tafain, who's also, in fact, uh, the Executive Director of uh, People's Watch. He'll be joining us from Madurai. Justice Krishna Iyer said, the police should use their wits and not their fists to extract confessions. How do you do it, sir? Uh, the endeavor is that uh, we must use more of a wit, wit in the sense uh, see, if before you examine somebody, interrogate somebody, you need to have adequate information about that particular person and the entire case. And uh, you must know what kind of questions to frame and uh, what kind of uh, uh, questions that must be asked to that person. And uh, so This is more from the textbook, uh, sir, because I know you're straight, I mean, you've had a stint in training also. This is what the textbook says, this is what the books say, but is this being practiced? This is something which must be practiced. Is it being practiced? Uh, uh, there are instances where it is not, where it is not, and uh, shortcuts are adopted. I'm, uh, uh, definitely, there are instances where it is done. But wherever we have, like a training academy, be it training academy, be it uh, any forum for even training for in-service uh, officers, or uh, um, whenever we have meeting of uh, senior officers, we always advocate that uh, right. such uh, practices. Okay, all are right. Ozzy uh, Fernandez. Ajmal Kasab, I mean, 31 crore rupees is an, an estimate, but of course that's for infrastructure and a whole lot of other things. The whole world saw him going around uh, fully loaded, armed to the teeth and spraying bullets on innocent civilians and on policemen. Uh, is the state being too soft on, on criminals, in this case a terrorist? No, if you follow the constitution, if you follow various uh, laws in this country, Kasab has a right to a fair and free trial. So there's no question of softness and hardness. He must go through a fair and free trial. There are international standards. India is a signatory to international covenants on this matter. And Kasab must have a fair trial. You, who, I mean, he's only accused. He's not convicted. So he has the right to have a fair trial. So Kasab, I think, is on good ground. And Kasab has now questioned. He's now retracted. He said he came to uh, Mumbai to act on a film. He, earlier, we heard him asking for biryani and uh, Dio sprays and whatnot in the prison. Uh... I'm not into all that. 
I'm only saying that the accusation of being called a terrorist, you know, by the media or by the police, before you're convicted. Uh, Nalani Sriharan is now fighting that case in court. Yeah. Uh, first, she was given, uh, it was commuted from death to life. Now she wants to even come out of uh, prison citing health grounds and a whole lot of other reasons. Govind Sami's case, what, what message does it send out to victims of crime? No, I guess we need to first de define who is a criminal. Nalini Sriharan did not get a fair trial. We know what happened inside uh, the Pundamali High Court, I mean, Pundamali uh, yes. se Sessions Court. We have no clue as to what the reasoning was behind convicting Nalini in the first case. That brings us to the essential question as to who is a criminal. This country has laws that can lock you and put you away. Even 41 of uh, CRPC or 42 of CRPC can put you away without uh, an arrest warrant. And you have this uh, Gujcock and uh, Maharashtra Organized uh, Crimes uh, Act, which essentially says that you can virtually lock anybody away and I can extract a confession from you, saying that, you know, I was uh, ferrying uh, illegal substances in that car. It's so easy to do that. So you can be in for life and you can be locked away for life based on your own confession. That will constitute, uh, you know, the uh, proof against you in a court of law. It's as simple as that. So we have to first define this thing of criminals. Are we criminals because we, you know, infringe on some small law and hanging on to that? Lack and some 70, police officers. are languishing in prisons because of petty offenses. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the point that I would like to make. All right, I want to bring in uh, Dr. R.K. Raghavan, one of uh, India's finest CBI directors. A good number of these encounters are completely staged. Uh, what do you have to say, sir? Point is, uh, th this is a very contentious subject where uh, both there is a mixture of uh, truth and falsehood. Yes, some of the encounters are definitely staged, managed, contrived. But then the, the point of it, I'm not trying to hold a brief for those who, are, uh, who have staged these encounters. Why do they indulge in these encounters? Because they feel that if uh, they catch a person alive, a known um, terrorist, a known offender, if they catch them alive, if they put him through the regular criminal justice process, it will take years uh, for you to get the better of him and send him to the gallows or uh, send him to jail. So the, the, the legal process is so tortuous, so complicated, and uh, the kind of proof which courts require is so high. Many police officers adopt the shortcut. I am not condoning it. I am not for it. I never used it. But it is a hard fact of life. Whether you like it or not, whatever laws you bring against these encounters, these encounters will continue to remain. The, the point is, there is a lot of political support for such encounters. There is a lot of public support. Many of the public themselves feel that this is the only way to tackle those who transgress law and indulge in mindless violence. What about the misuse of it, sir? You are absolutely right. Yeah, this is definitely subject to misuse. That's why officers like me, and let me confess that I am considered a very soft officer. So many of my colleagues were decrying me, saying that I am not for hot tactics. Uh, this is liable to misuse. But tell me which authority does not misuse on occasion. The question is motivation. What is the motive for such violations? Is the, is the motive honest? Uh, then you must give that test. If you feel that a law and order situation is going out of hands, and particularly in the present context when terrorists are coming, uh, um, into uh, sneaking into our territory and indulging in violence like the one which you saw in 2611, there is tremendous public support for such killings. But this is very unfortunate that the law is not moving uh, as fast as the terrorists. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll come back to you. Uh, Mr. Pradeep Philip, the Hu National Human Rights Commission has made it abundantly clear that every encounter killing should be investigated as a potential case of murder. Uh, right, Ozzy? Okay. Many human rights activists seem to suggest that encounter killings are staged because officers want gallantry medals. If it is an encounter which has been staged, then the perpetrators of that crime would obviously have to face the requirements of the law. But one cannot judge an entire system by a few aberrations. There could be a few aberrations. It's not that the police should be soft or hard. The golden rule is an iron hand in a velvet glove. The velvet glove is what every citizen should see, but the iron hand is what every criminal should see. A lot of innocent people face the lati. The lati is also part of the legitimate... Velvet glove. No, it's not part of the... It's part of the iron hand part of it. It's the iron hand part of it. In Andhra, we saw, you know, those girls who had acid thrown on their faces, and yeah. then after that, those people were uh, bumped off in an encounter. That's right. There was uh, 
widespread public support for that you know, case-to-case exactly. basis. Exactly. Because some encounters are stage managed. Uh, doesn't uh, you can't uh, what to say you cannot uh, give, allow the criminal to escape most of the encounters you see it's like if the police officer would have been you know attacked or there would have been an attempt to escape you would have been a dreaded criminal so those cases the police officers uh, you know how, see, how many cases do you think uh, the policemen are attacked or is it sometimes you know stage managed we have done fact finding investigations into at least 24 of what happened in tamil nadu over the last few years everything is stage managed what basis do you say? On that? the basis that in at least 80% of the cases, the person who was knocked off was in police custody and is being moved from one place to another, number one. What if he tried to escape? And, if you, see, and, 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 and if you see the type of injuries that the police officer faces, it's always one small here on the left arm or the right arm. Is that, Time and again. Is that a fair charge, uh, Mr. Rajesh Das? <laughs> if there is a fake encounter, and according to him, 24 out of 24 is fake and uh, sometimes um, why is there no system to go into it? Because the police doesn't have to uh, in, uh, inquire into that case. It can be inquired by, uh, it is the, you know, invariably done by the revenue and uh, or uh, a commission of inquiry no, 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 or... What, 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 there is a system, it's not as if there is no, no system. There is a system. Encounters, encounters are not dealt with by police. Police, uh, I mean, with exactly. the specific police encounter. Exactly. The police personnel, they will not investigate the crime. Exactly. It will be investigated by a revenue divisional officer. Exactly. Uh, there is a separate procedure contemplated by... There is a procedure and every what, time what, what there is... What is, what is yes, I'll see. Yeah, the NHRC has said, you take it on, the senior police officer, registered as an FAR for murder or suspicious death and proceed with the police officers who were involved in the encounter in a scientific investigation. These are the NHRC guidelines. So the RDO inquiry, we have asked that you can either do an RDO inquiry or you can do a magisterial inquiry, a judicial magisterial inquiry. The Tamil Nadu government has failed time and again to order judicial, uh, judicial magistrate inquiry into these encounters. Why? Why has it got to be an RDO? This NHRC guideline to start or presume that he is committed murder is also another radical view. It's absolutely radical view that you say that he's charged of murder. Okay, like you yourself said when you're talking about Kasaf, that he's just an accused. But you, you are presuming that he's committed murder. No, no. it's an application of double standards. No, it's not double standards. It's a violation no, of the rule I mean, of law. No, I see, it is. It you you first honor right to life. You see, honor right to life first. A government officer. You have no business to take life. Even no, no, the no, police no. officer has a right to life and the right to dignity see, and the right to a fair trial. Charging? Right. But I'm showing you encounter after encounter where it's fake. There is an encounter. Police doesn't have a hand in further inquiry. Exactly. Okay. Now, it is for you to devise a system and find out. And we are not against it. But you cannot say that I conducted an investigation with, um, with my resources, which uh, are not difficult to know that pretty inadequate, and then come to a conclusion. That is what I am against. No, you, again, you, you, is, are supposed, you can go ahead, no. create a system, do a fair investigation into it, and anybody is guilty. See, we are here to protect the public, okay? We are not against here, we are not against. The police is for the public. Yes. It is not against the public. And if somebody does wrong, you know, we all come from you. We are not coming from heaven. Right. That's right. So, no, time, and again, you, of society. time and again, and so you people say, you jolly will be thankful to the job that we are doing. We are protecting you. The same attitude that the army has in Kashmir is what is reflective here. See, you will not do any introspection. You will only always say, look, be thankful. We are coming from the society. Yes, army comes from the See, society. I am part of the society. Listen, listen. Well. I am saying, one no, I, See, I, I, I am only saying, the please, please that give is, them also a fair chance. That That's is all. Also, it's, not, it's not a question. That is not the question. What what is not in question is what we are doing inside our system to see that it doesn't take place. The fact that it's very few and far, he's talking about 24 and 150 years of terminal policing. Okay, so which means very few and far. So, and we are not here discussing what we are doing inside to prevent such things from happening. All right, human, rights, not in the human rights activists uh, seldom get along with police officials. We know yeah, why. For more reasons, one, I want, I want to bring in another human all rights activist. Media. All the media, as Radha Krishnan says, I want to bring in another human rights activist. Most members of the public have this grouse against human rights activists. They say human rights activists champion the cause of the accused and not really of uh, people who are, you know, victims of crime. Well, uh, this is the, the uh, usually um, uh, mentioned uh, accusation against um, uh, activists. Human rights is for all, and it is all human rights for all. Whether they are accused, whether they are victims, they are entitled to the same human rights, full and undivided.
Fair enough. We'll take that comment. It's time to now uh, go into a short break. When we return, we'll ask all our panelists and our jury, the audience here, about the preventive detention, whether that could be a possible solution.